Hello and welcome to App Spy and Pocket Gamers Twitch channel. My name's Jay Gilmore. Down below me there is Peter Wellington. Oh, hi. Hi there. And this is Monday. And on Monday, we're going to start doing a special thing. What we've been doing up until now is playing a few games for an hour or so. But on Wednesdays, we do Eye on the App Store, which shows you the new releases. So it has a specific theme. What we're going to do is going to make each day on this channel a differently themed day with different types of shows detailing different types of games and genres and whatnot. Today we want to do Genre Busters which is a show in which we're going to pick a genre or subgenre and then show you maybe four or five games that we like from that genre and then uh, you can kind of say watch them and see what you need to get if you're a platforming fan for example or if you're a first person shooter or whatever we'll show you the most exciting games the games that are most highly rated on both Pocket Gamer and App Spy. Mm -hmm. Play through them for a little bit, for a lark, and then, if you like the look of them or you're familiar, you can either A, go and get them, or B, at the end of the show, we'll probably do a bit of a vote as well, and see what the public consensus is, and we can mm. kind of stamp it officially in, mm -hmm. in Internet Inc., and say, this is the best game in whatever genre it might be. Today, Punishing Platformers is our genre of choice. Good. Uh, so we're going to look at five games that we think are the most uh, interesting and most challenging, in some cases, platformers on this lovely iOS device that I've got before me. So, what are we going to start with? That is the question. We're trying to keep this a little bit a little bit secret, so I'm going to keep things covered underneath. And, uh, oh, look, here we go. Already, the screen is up. So, first choice today is... Let's drop the placeholder down. Look at that! It's Kid Trip, who's just <gasps> been killed by a dude. Awesome. So, let me show you how this works. Um, it is a auto-scrolling platformer in which you have to run along, collect coins, destroy funny creatures, uh, and it's well hard. <laughs> it's the hardest. <laughs> so difficult. Yes. So, uh, the first couple of levels, as you can see, looks very Sonic the Hedgehog, doesn't it? You can see it's imitated quite clearly by those, ah, old-fashioned, uh, platformers. At least in art style. Now, I am not pushing this kid forward. He is running automatically. And it's up to me to do it through a combination of jumping and lobbing these little stones, try and A, collect as many coins as possible, and B, ah, make sure I kill off every single creature. See, that monkey and his coconut, oh. It's one of those ones we have to remember every single enemy, every single attack, uh, and time it perfectly. And, oh, it's quite tough. There you go, it is, got me. It is absolutely quite tough. So, um... One of the things I've completely forgotten to say, like the true professional I am, is that I am watching, I will be mainly the person who's watching the actual chat room going on on App Spy and Pocket Gamers uh, Monday stream. Um, and uh, so, yes, for Genre Busters, if you do have any comments or questions or anything like that, then uh, do please put them in there because I'm fairly confident, James, you are going to be far too focused <laughs> on these challenging platforms. I just, I completed that level. That's a good thing. So now we're on to the yep. next one. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a toughie. Uh, the thing that you have to remember on this game as well is that there you get 10 lives and if you run out of those 10 lives I think you get kicked back to the beginning of the whole bastard game if I, <laughs> if I, if I remember correctly just to add an additional layer of horrible toughness oh look at that you see you, okay. the, you have to time those jumps on those oh. little floating uh, platforms so carefully uh, so if you're not familiar with these I don't know I guess these very precision based platformers on, on iOS. There you go, game over, because I played a little bit beforehand. I'm going to continue. And it's killed all my coins, there you go. So it picks up uh, where you left off, but you lose all of your coins in your process, so your high score's gone. It's it's screwed, it's, it's shafted. But, there you go, I've just done it again, stupid jumps. You uh, have to basically memorize every single move you want to do. You have to be so sensitive in the ma manner by which you make the kid jump. Because you, you push and hold, you'll jump a little bit longer like there. Or you have to do some very, very short jumps to avoid being spiked in the face. That's up. These bits. Ah, oh, you see. It's those floating platforms there. If you don't get it just perfect, then that's it. You're just, you're completely screwed. It has no sympathy and no remorse. And in some ways, like, that's really frustrating. And it can make you tear your hair out and want to, you know, throw your iPad out the window. But in some ways, oh god, same thing again. In some ways, it's kind of massively satisfying when you get it right. These precision platformers are very, very rewarding sometimes. Yeah, so I think I think that's the appeal of most of the games that we've been playing on this on this list of five, isn't yeah. it? Like it, it's that it's that challenge, it's that Mega Man thing, it's that super meat boy kind of a thing. Yep. Whereby it's it's that uh, 
it's that sort of it's almost actually quite a masculine thing it's like that thing of, <laughs> it, uh, it's that thing of i'm gonna beat this thing it has tried to defeat me but no i have bested it maybe it's not even a masculine thing maybe it's one of those things where if you you know if you're the sort of person who plays the warrior in rpgs and you want to go on quests and uh, save the kingdom oh, and all that sort of thing so like close. these are the these kind of games i would say are the kind of games that appeal to you as you know as as people who like platformers now the game itself uh. to me it looks like a combination right of a Game Gear game, <laughs> yeah. um, and like because like it's so zoomed in, and that's how like the game game Gear used to be. Yeah. And also, um, as Caffeine Dreamer, who uh, who is Danny, our community manager, who is in the chat room right now, also fielding uh, questions where you're putting amazing links oh, uh, to all the content we're talking right, about. Yeah, well. um, he said it's a lot like Adventure Island, and that is a damn good shout. Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. It's it's it, it's got that sort of Ad Adventure Island sort of. Um, it's almost like you have to constantly be throwing rocks on some of the levels, yeah. otherwise you're completely As left. I've just discovered, yeah. yeah. I remember playing this, I played this through for review, and I got to the end of this game, right? But this was like about a year ago, okay? Mm. Uh, and the fact that I haven't played it for that long is really, really, really showing. I remember it took me a long time to get through, but it's cut. The other thing that you get from these games, as well as the insane frustration, it becomes like a zen thing. It yeah. becomes like a complete muscle memory. Uh, I remember exactly where each jump lands where each enemy appears and you're almost not thinking about it by the time you're getting it oh it's messed it up again by the time you get it right you're kind of doing it automatically but it takes a while to get there like you have to kind of form the muscle memory first luckily as you can see the annoyance of dying is offset by the fact you've got immediate restarts which are essential in games mm. like this mm. there you go i've just got further than i've ever got before so far here we go boom Tiny jumps and made it to the end. Clear run. Made it. You see, now I feel quite good. And that's that's the payoff, right? Because <laughs> it is horrible and it's horrible and you feel like a dick and you mess it up so many times. Then when you get it right, so sweet. Look at all these little jumps. Oh, no. Right, gotta get those jumps, little jumps right. But yeah, so you get these kind of these pits and troughs of frustration and then a massive amount of elation. Let's see if I can do a long jump. Ah, oh, I'll do a long jump and shoot the monkey. That's what I'll do. <laughs> and gradually. <laughs> Shut up, I'm being tactical here. I got told off for, me, for doing that once. Yeah, oh, go on. I've got it right there, there you go, magic. One, two, three, little jump, snake, balloon, jump, oh my god. Ah. Taken out by a lobster at the end. But, it's really quite satisfying. Like, behind the lo-fi gameplay and everything, it's designed so that there really is kind of one perfect solution to get through the level. And when you do hit it, when you get it just perfect, there you go, got a bit further now. It's really, oh damn, that little jumpy thing didn't spring me very high. I need to jump when I when I land on it. Maybe that's the key. Yeah, when you do finally hit the perfect stride, it's devilishly satisfying. And that's that's the payoff, that's your reward. It will only suit a certain kind of player. Ooh, here we go again. Because if you are easily put off by a very, very cruel uh, level of difficulty, then you will end up throwing it out the window in a few seconds. You really will just go. And that can be that can be quite expensive if you're playing it. You know, yes, I've had. <laughs> and you just go. Actually, you know what? Sod this. I don't have the time for this. This is rubbish. But if you do, in oh, you see, didn't quite make it that time. I need to wait a little bit longer before I jump, so I can perch right on the edge, and that's the way to do it. But you get thrown straight back in again and you can take another run, and now, that's really important for these games. One of the things that's going on in the chat right now, actually, a really good comment uh, by Soda Almighty there, um, is that these games shouldn't have live systems. Now, <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like I agree 99% with that, because most of these games where it's that thing of, you know, there's, there's no point in having lives anymore, because we don't have, like, an arcade sensibility anymore. Sure. But but with I suppose with Kid Trip, the lives are there just to make it even harder. Well, the thing with the lives is, it doesn't actually throw you back to the beginning of the game. So you are okay. I, I it's was, the world. couldn't remember. It? It's, you know, it's, it's not even the world. What it is, is... I've got to get that right. Um, it robs you of your high score. It takes away your coins. Right. So you still get to continue to progress, but... Ah, oh, for crying out loud. Oh, so it's like a one credit continue in a shmup. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of, but like, it, you, even if you die a million times, you'll still get back to the same beginning of the same uh, level. It won't rob you of your progress physically, but what it will, will do is it will take away your coins. And so I guess the thing you get to do, see it says game over here now, but I can just continue, but my coins, boof, they disappear. Mm -hmm. And so what it's doing is encouraging you to try and make like a perfect run. And, kind of, and not lose any of your coins, and then if you reach the end of the game, you know, having not lost, uh, died more than nine times, 
Mm -hmm. then you'll have a mighty score of coins. And I guess that's where the real super competition is. It's like doing it in a super hard mode, I guess, to mm. try and not die a million times. My problem is I'm, now I'm holding it off the edge of the table and my thumb is occasionally yeah. missing the screen, which isn't yeah. very helpful. Bad workman tools. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> Shut I, mean, <laughs> so um, I, I think this is... I, I love this game and hate it. And, like, uh, yeah. I, I can't... I cannot play this game because it... Because it is so good at what it does, I can't enjoy it. <laughs> well, my problem is now that the thing I didn't take into account before doing this stream and I should have thought of is, <laughs> these are all games which are impossible to play and talk. <laughs> but I'm doing it anyway, and the point is... <laughs> there we go again, death. The point is not to, for me to show that I'm any good, because clearly I'm sucking at the moment. Um, mm. But watch my review, because I totally played through this game. I was yeah, able me. to do it. Sure. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, No, I did, I did. Um, right. But the idea is to sh sort of show you what they look like and give you a flavour for them. And just recommend them if you haven't had a chance to see them. Because this is a relatively small game, but we really thought it was a kind of a gem, a little diamond in the rough, if you're into this particular kind of precision platforming. It's punishing, it certainly isn't for everyone, but if you are that kind of player, then this really does offer them high stakes and that high level of challenge, but also that high level of reward as well. So that is Kid Trip. I think we'll, we'll pop up the little uh, placeholder there. Boom. Okay. And uh, we'll get the next game prepared. Because we, we want to keep some of the mystique, don't we? Exactly, some now, of the mystique um, going, so we'll get rid of that. Boom, that's game number one. So everyone okay. make a note. Kid okay. Trip, that's the first Trip. game. So okay, for the vote at down. the end, keep, okay. keep keep that in mind. So there's your first option. Okay, what should we go with? I'll go for ooh, this one. What am I choosing? Ooh, you might be able to hear noises appear in the background. Actually, I'm going to turn my TV on so I can hear noises. Because at the moment, yeah. I'm operating kind of in silence. Okay. So I am, eerie. I am writing down Kid Trip. I'm sure we all are too. <laughs> yes, everyone make a note. Everyone make a note, everyone. Come on. That's what um, doing. So uh, if you are just joining us, then uh, this is Apps by and Pocket Gamer Stream uh, of Genre Busters. And we are uh, uh, we are going through a genre. This is Punishing Platformers. And we've just played Kid Trip. Now, what are we going to play next? Now we're going to play, let's get rid of it all. Baboom! League of Evil 3. Oh, yes. We talk about this game so much. We, we really do. This is the one. Because there's a good reason for this, right? Now, we're starting at the beginning again because I have to re-download these games, unfortunately. Again, I reviewed this one on AppSpy. You can go and see the review. Hopefully, Danny might throw it into the window or something like that. Yeah. Um, and again, completed it. Uh, but we have to delete stuff off our iPads all the time to make room for new games. And I never it's a, it's a end hard up life. saving the progress. So, we're starting from the top. But League of Evil 3 is banging because platformers as we've discovered through playing a whole bunch of them over the course of our little you know doing reviews and whatnot they're very difficult to get right on touch screens because you don't have the joysticks you don't have these physical buttons and that can be a real barrier to making a precision platformer work on ios because things get a bit jerky things get a bit shonky uh, you can't really control them properly and they become a bit unreliable league of evil is one of the series of games that really nails it. This gets it so right, and and it's not just a simple kind of control system. Obviously, you've just got the left and right and the AB of a classic side-scrolling platformer from maybe the NES era or something, but the important thing is that it responds exactly how you would want it to. It doesn't make you feel like, oh god, I wish I had a controller. It really feels comfortable when you're playing it. And that's a big deal for these kind of games because so often on iOS, you just sit there playing it going, oh god, I just wish I had some real buttons. This is rubbish. This isn't. The Ravenous Games, who are the guys behind it, they are one of the few companies who really gets it. Whoa, and there you go. Immediately with this game, same thing, instant restarts, which we love. You have to remember who is what and where. See, if I just run straight towards that guy and try and punch him, I get killed. So clearly he's going to get a shot off before I get a chance. Jump over him, punch him in the face. Likewise this guy. Ah, damn. And I like these kind of games, even though, like I say, you have to go down a bit, learn a pattern, take him out. Same thing again, I'll slide down this wall, get this guy's attention. He shoots, I dump, he dodges, and he's dead. Lovely. And that, just that little thing, that's really satisfying. Now, I need to use a double jump in order to avoid getting electrocuted. Jump up again, boom, punch this guy in the face. Now, I don't know what's down here. I could jump and nearly die. Oh, amazing, because I jumped halfway through. I jumped uh, to avoid those little electric spikes. Again, if I just left it falling, then I'd be very dead. Here, I have to do some wall climbing, back and forth and back and forth. Here, he's going to shoot me again. Oh, damn it. 
jumped just as he shot me. And then you get kicked back to the beginning of the level. Mm. There's no checkpoints in this, is there? No! No checkpoints. And again, that's the kind of thing that could really, really piss some people off. And I get that. But when you complete your perfect run, oh, yeah. oh it's so satisfying. It's so bloody lovely. Oops. So so what would we what would we sort of relate this game to? Personally, like ah. it looks like and when like when I played I think I played League of Evil 2, mm -hmm. it felt a lot like a modern Mega Man game, maybe a Mega Man X kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like that. It's just a very kind of bare bones platformer. Mm. But with these games, it is all about the well, as we say, as we know, it's all about the controls and it's all about the level design. And uh, if you can get the controls just right, there you go. You complete a sweet run, and by very definition, because it's a one-hit kill scenario, if you make a, if you get to the end of the level, then you have done a perfect run, mm. and that that is satisfying. That gives you that kind of I am invulnerable and perfect feeling, what, which is awesome. What's also satisfying is one punching people until they explode. True. Yes. Two, the fact that he looks like Jax from Mortal Kombat Three. <laughs> That's true. Kind of a big, bulky Jax. Yeah. They changed the art style a little bit actually. The first two games were much more kind of eight-bit looking. And then with this one, they redrew the character art to make it look a little bit more, I guess, sort of, you know, cartoony and less jaggedy and angular. Which mm. some people liked, some people didn't like, whatever. Oh, God, I remember these. Oh, it's been a while since I played this. It's so it's fun <laughs> to see this all again. Uh, it's, it's all about that perfect timing and then kick a scientist in the face. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm talking now, about. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing, right? All scientists, in the end, get kicked in the face. Like, that's basically, they go through their entire lives being like being really smart people who are like sort of tormented at school and whatever and then you come along because they've been making naughty things in their little laboratory and you punch them in the face well, and they you explode know, into little jibby bits. They turn me into a, a terrifying bionic man and yeah. this has upset me massively. So you get a whole bunch of other things, there you go, man in the face, outstanding. I could have gone further in that level and explored other areas. So there's other areas to explore, This is you'll, we'll only see the first little bit of it, and this is kind of, a, I guess, an industrial warehouse level, I suppose. But later on you get some outdoor foresty stuff, you get bits with aquatic areas and stuff as well. I think there's four separate stages. Um, but it's just really satisfying. It's smooth mm. and it's solid and it's super satisfying. Um, but you have to have a certain level of tolerance for the fact that you're going to die. You're going to die a lot. And that's going to be a running theme throughout all of these games. You have to be prepared to die and not take it as a failure, but take it as a learning process. I think, I think one of the other things that is a running theme of all of these games is the strangeness of the architecture like no, the, in platforming games no architecture ever is real like it, it never works like if you imagine this this being a real factory mm. right how on earth with would the spinning this... saw blades going oh, up and down the, the walls for no reason other but than also just me. like the, the platform like there's a you know a, a small little box area in the top left that has no stairs stair access to it like First of all, this is a health and safety nightmare. <laughs> right? Second, um, second, like, how do general sort of just workers just get around or anything like that? It's terrible. No doesn't wonder they're sense, always doesn't dying. Appear. It doesn't make any sense. But that is that's oh, thing that happens, wow. that happens all of the time with platformers, I feel. Um, and also, yes, with, with the painful, you know, the, the also the sort of painful loss of dying uh, with these really hard ones, I suppose. Um, oh, oh my oh. word, spinning I remember, I, I remember that bit in the middle uh, where those two guns are placed. Oh. That's a real tough area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screws you. Yeah, but the, I, you're sort of almighty. Without the, without the scientist, I wouldn't have the bionic arm. But without the scientist, I wouldn't be escaping from the facility in the first place. So Ooh. the whole game Ooh. wouldn't exist, you see. What, what, which came first? Chicken or the egg? Uh, he didn't ask for this bionic arm. He was brutally Ooh. mutilated. That's how Ooh. it works. Ooh. Now, how the hell did I do this before? I've got to try and remember the perfect timing for this. Uh, actually, don't even bust it. Don't even bother taking those things out. I keep wanting to sh punch them out. You don't actually have to. I think mm. you can just get away with not doing it. Uh, as uh, as, as Caffeine Dreamer uh, points out, it is an evil factory, so I'm sure probably they weren't thinking about sort of disabled access or anything like that. No, probably not. I don't probably they think won't. they're very big on political correctness or like. No, no it's just mainly oh, evil, no. isn't it? Yeah, yeah pretty much lots of evil. But um, even though you're watching me die repeatedly in the face, and it look, seems like it's frustrating or annoying, it is. But it's also so sweet. I mean, I'm like happy to be doing this, and obviously, I would usually be sitting in silence with this look on my. This, that, that death mask of concentration on my face, <laughs> rather than trying to talk to about a thousand people online, because it makes it a bit trickier. But 
<laughs> it's just for the process of showing you guys what it is. And I trust me, this is really good fun if you are prepared to put in the time and prepare to suffer the deaths and learn. I guess if you're a, a Dark Souls player, you might be accustomed to this idea of just dying repeatedly and then eventually getting it right, getting that sweet, sweet timing. And then, oh, it's so sweet, it's so satisfying. But, uh, you know, as long as you're up for it, and you're prepared to suck up the deaths, then this is one for you. So, uh, League of Evil 3, that's number two on our list of games. So, let's let's go back to the, uh, put the placeholder up. Boom. Go back to the main screen. So, anyone who's keeping track, Kid Trip, League of Evil. No, oh, yep. I've made, right. a no I've made a note. Good stuff. All right, then. I'm going to pull up the next one now. And uh, we'll explore the third game of the five that we're going to be doing. So... At the end of all this, make sure you're, you're paying attention and we will do a little bit of a vote mm. uh, and see what we think is the bestest. I can mm -hmm. see already people putting up things and like potential suggestions for games in the chat room, which is good to see. Ninja Gaiden, the NES version. Yep, yep, that's all good. Um, obviously not playable on iOS, but you know. So, you might be able to hear already what the next game is. Um, I give it away. Yes, possibly. But if you haven't, let's take this one down and let's pull it out. Can you guess what that is? Can you see what that is? Yeah, it is. Rayman Fiesta Run, boys and girls. Good, good, good. Yeah, I know, right? So this is one of my favorites. This mm -hmm. is just a gorgeous, wonderful thing. Now, some people might say, yeah, it's really pretty, it's really smooth, and it's really playable. Not necessarily the most challenging platform ever. Now, huh. it, now you're, it bloody is, right? Because if you... <laughs> <laughs> as I've just demonstrated by missing that, that loom over there, it's not getting to the end of the level so much, although it is in the later levels at the beginning. It's about getting all 100 lungs. It's about getting that perfect, perfect run in which you collect every single one of the little buggers uh, and make it to the end and get your 100% rating. That's what it's all about. Uh, even with the first game of the series on iOS, which was Rayman Jungle Run, uh, they had these Land of the Livid Dead episodes, which they would end the episode with them. You'd do nine normal ones, and then it would hit the end and uh, it was just not about collecting them, it was all about the time limit. And just completing those levels is a nightmare. And then trying to get to the, trying to climb the leaderboard, trying to get the fastest time, that's where the challenge is. That's where you spend an hour repeating the same level just to try and inch your way up that leaderboard. And it's so sweet when you get to the top, so sweet. Now this one, I say I'm starting at the beginning, it's kind of a nice cooler level, and it's showing me everything that's, that's being unlocked. Um, if you've never played either of these games, like the first one, which is Rayman Jungle Run, or this Rayman Fiesta Run, I then shame on you, because what have you been doing with your iPhone or iPad all this time? It's so beautiful. It really nails what it is to make a console game and then take it and turn it into an iOS touchscreen game. Oh, so yeah. many people just try and drag it over, don't so, they? So there was, um, so the console ones of the reboots were Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends. That's right. And then, sort of in between all of those, or just before each one kind of came out, we had Rayman Jungle Run and Rayman uh, Fiesta Run. That's right, that's what this is, the one I'm playing. And it's obviously Fiesta we're playing Fiesta Run. Um, now, so, this is the thing, like, I completely agree with you, it is always about getting the games right. Because 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 this is UBR engine, and Ubisoft very famously said, you know, oh, we could put this onto anything, you know, this engine yeah, yeah. Can run pretty much on anything. Um, and in fact, you know, they got the original to work on a Wii, which is you know, PlayStation 2 Plus, right? Yep. Um, so it could very easily run on, a, on an iOS, but they didn't, they didn't try and put strange controls onto it, they didn't try to put on touch controls in a game that you absolutely need buttons for, they didn't do any of that, they just went, you know what, let's make our own game. Yeah, they did the sensible thing to do, which is, don't try and port Rayman Legends onto iOS and just put like little floating buttons in because you know what that game was made for consoles It's mm. designed to run on consoles. It's designed to run on touch on, on actual joy pads and joysticks and stuff Don't just try and bung it onto a touch screen because that so rarely ever works And mm -hmm. all you end up with is a game which you're playing when you're going God I wish I had a controller mm. So what they did was they did this which is a single touch kind of auto runner But it is a platformer as well. It's not just an endless runner because you can change directions, you can jump up walls, you can do a lot of other stuff. And at the beginning, the levels I'm playing here, I am simply using one button, just the jump button like that, in order to control him. Later on, however, he gets a punch, which allows him to punch through things. He gets the ability to fly, which you then control with your other thumb. So it becomes kind of a two-button game. But they've managed to absolutely nail the feel of the console game without compromising it by just going, oh, we'll just, we'll just 
port the same game over and just stick some floating buttons, that'll be fine. Because it wouldn't be fine. No, it, it would be, be rubbish. Yeah. Whereas this is absolutely perfectly suited for touchscreen controls. It's the, the mark of a sensible developer or a sensible development team that understands the limitations and the strengths of the device that they are making a game for. Yeah. That's what it's all about. The reason we like games like The Room and things like that, those touchscreen games which you can go in and you can pinch to zoom and you can physically twist things around with your fingers, which is a thing you could only do on a touchscreen. They are using the device to its full potential rather than trying to make it a console game sort of with some and, buttons on it. And for me, this has got a lot more personality than something like a, I don't know, is it called Rampage Run now? It used to be called Running With Friends, but like that or a Temple Run mm -hmm. or a, you know, even to some extent a, a Gravity uh, guy or whatever the flip, flip, flip it's called. Gravity um, guy. Jetpack Joyride? What are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. Might be Jetpack Joyride. But, <laughs> you know, you know, because this is ultimately a sort of, it is an auto runner, right? Yes. Because auto runners, you know, obviously had a, a massive um, moment on iOS and to some extent still do. But it's Cannibal and the like, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it's. It, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things whereby this actually just totally works and it feels right and it's got far more personality and charm. Now, I love the music. That's one of the things. The I music's amazing. Do. I can't hear it at the moment because I've got it turned off, but you literally do the... Look, look at that. Look at that. Perfect run. 100 limbs. Look at this thing creep up bit by bit by bit. 100 limbs. Great big crown. Perfect sign. And look at me. I'm all smug and happy. Mm -hmm. That is how a game should make you feel, and that is why, that's where the reward is. Because the previous ones, obviously I'm talking, not doing it brilliantly, it's like, yeah, I, I completed it, fine, but I could always do better. And it's that sort of, I want to complete it, I want to go, and I want to climb up the leaderboards and stuff. When you get that full, uh, this crown, it, there you go, it tells you, I get my crown, and I unlock a higher difficulty level thing because I completed it. So there's my lovely reward, and I can then tackle it again, and oh, oh, I feel so good, oh, it's just... The waves of lusciousness wafting, washing over me now. Even though I've completed all these levels before, like way back when, mm. um, when it first came out. Again, for the review, the review is on App Spy. It's also on Pocket Gaming. You can read them both and see the video review. And you know, no, I make no secret about the fact that I like these games. Ah, should have gone down, shouldn't have gone up then. So, the patterns. Rain Man Fiesta Run. I'm adding as game number three Absolutely. to our list. I think I'm just going to play this for the rest of the time. I think yeah, screw okay, the other games. I'm just gonna... <laughs> no, I'll complete the seven as well uh, because it's just so lovely. Now, if you haven't ever played either of these games, get Jungle Run first. I think. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah like uh, I, this game is perhaps a bit more polished and has some slightly different mechanics. But Jungle Run is amazing. Like, I loved playing yeah, through that game. And then Fiesta Run came out, and yes, it's more of the same, but it's just done so beautifully and so charmingly that I don't, I don't care. I was hungry for more of the same. Uh, it's it's exactly the kind of game that a console transposition should be. So they, they utterly nailed this one, and mm. hats off to them for doing so. So, Rayman, Fiesta Run, and honorarily Rayman Jungle Run as well. We'll put that to bed, so... Placeholder up. Boom. Okay. What's next then? Well, right. So we got two more in our run through of the five most incredibly uh, frustrating decision <laughs> platformers, right? Um, so two more. What could it possibly be? I'm trying to sort of scratch my head on this one. Um, Let's get rid of this stuff. They're always trying to flash. Flash new information up at me. It's such a shame to. I've played these games before, you see, and I'm seeing them all be locked up again, whereas previously I, I'd unlocked all this stuff and everything, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so, fourth game on the lift. On the okay. lift. On the list. On the lift, yeah. For your consideration, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mikey Hooks. Ah, uh, okay. Now, okay. this is the sequel to Mikey Shorts, which was called Mikey Shorts because he's a kid and he has some shorts. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's about as sort of far as it goes. Now, what they did here was they did the same kind of mechanics, the same simple 2D platform puzzle and mechanic -y things, but they added the ability to do hook shots because apparently the creators of the game had already been always been inspired by games that used hook shots, things like Bionic Commando and stuff like that. Um, and this time out, they wanted to include that mechanic whilst sticking with the whole Mikey Hooks thing. Uh, this game, as you can see by the timer counting down in the top right hand corner, or counting up rather, this is all about the speed run. This is the thing that they're trying to push here. Yes, you can run around and try and collect all the coins like I'm trying to do and absolutely failing. Um, but what they really want you to do is complete the game in as fast a time as humanly possible. Uh, and that's the trick. And once again, as with most of the games we're playing today, it's about getting a flow. 
It's about getting to the point where you never really stop. You're one constant little machine of movement, gliding from platform to platform and leaping atop enemies without a single ban. Missed mo moment or a you know, missed time step. Uh, which I'm again not doing right now, but when you see a couple, when you run for a few seconds, when you start to get the glide on, uh, again you get that little satisfaction wave of kind of like yes, yes, smoothly, mm. beautiful, beautiful. So uh, immediate feedback from me, right? right? First thing, I've never actually seen this game in motion. Like we really? always talk about it, but I've never seen it in motion. And it does look, um, as Danny's saying in the chat, it looks like an apogee platformer. It looks <laughs> like a Jill of the Jungle. Um, so, yeah. um, but it's I think very that, low-fi. That's, that's quite cool. Like I, I like that, and I, I think part of what sort of describes it as that Ooh. visually is the fact that like there's a lot of spikes everywhere there are coins to collect you know there's yep. the it's very oh, obvious that it's quite a simple like framework but it's also going to be really really tough like that's really obvious yes and again the controls as with all the games we're playing today are pretty much sort of perfect uh, as you can see the first bit of this run as I'm remembering how to play it it's becoming a little bit smoother it's all about the mixture between the hookshot mechanic which is the jumpy bit and the sliding beneath certain uh, mm. little archways and corridors it's getting down low sliding in and then jumping up and flying that's the kind of the balance you're going between and both mechanics when you get them just right are super satisfying and that's mm, what absolutely. this is all about and um, it, you know I <laughs> You know, I really wish that, uh, that that the guys behind this one would be given the Spider-Man license, because <laughs> like like it fit, like it looks like it's really satisfying. Like it looks like you're properly web slinging. You know, yeah, I obviously there is got that shots up, but it looks so much it looks so much fun. There's a nice physics of when you're kind of doing the hook shot, as you can see. If you if you uh, that wasn't good. If you attach yourself to it very low it starts to pull you up. It doesn't just keep the line the exactly the same length, the hookshot kind of winds in a little bit. Yeah. And it gives you an upward momentum to jump off like I'm doing here. And that's really fun. You get a really nice slidey, like, whoa, when you're jumping away. <laughs> that's the perfect description. And that's awesome, and it's really yeah. nice. Uh, same thing with the sliding. See, that was a little bit a little bit cleaner that time, more two stars, as I'm, as I'm remembering how to play the damn thing. Um, it's just fun, really, really, really fun. And again, we're starting off uh, simple-ish. Uh, once you've played through these levels, you want to play through them, them again. This isn't a game you just play through once, it's a game you then find yourself coming back to and going, right, I now remember the structure of the level, I remember the, the layout, and I must now uh, try and do it so that I never once, A, hit an enemy, like I'm doing at the moment, and never pause. I, okay. You, there is a way to complete these levels, all of these levels, where your character never stops running. And hmm. that, again, that is where the satisfaction lies. And it takes a little practice, it takes a little time, but once you get there, it is surprisingly worth it. It is incredibly, incredibly pleasurable and satisfying just to make it to the end and be like, papa, smooth run, perfect times. Oh, that was good, you see? That was nice, unbroken. Ah, oh, damn, that little guy at the end got... Okay. Now, the game that was released previously, Mikey Shorts, was also very well reviewed. Uh, it didn't have the hookshot mechanic and the enemies. I don't think they had spikes on them. I think that was oh, well, come on. Come on, developers. I know, spikes. Right. Far it's too like, easy. It's a, uh, yeah, come on. Uh, you add spikes, you automatically get uh, a higher review score. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you game the system, is it? <laughs> yeah, you add spikes. Um, if there's a dubstep trailer, we'll think it's better. And, <laughs> uh, and lens flare. Like, that's all you need. 10 out of 10. These bits always make me laugh because it's like um, the bits in Sonic where you have to go and free the animals at the end of every level by jumping on a machine. Here, you have to uh, free the little guys uh, that are trapped in these little glass containers. Oh, yeah! Oh, I remember that now. Yeah, you had to you had to go and rescue all the little small little critters and farm animals yep. and stuff like that. That was before Sonic kissed girls. I know. Before it all what? went decidedly weird. What happened, Sonic? What happened? I jump high and break the glass. I don't know. He got uh, hanging around with humans too long, clearly. Well, clearly, I mean, oh. he was turned. But where did it go wrong? What game did it go wrong? Hmm? Was it Sonic Adventure? I think it might have been. Might have been Sonic Adventure. Look at this! Look at this! Oh, look at this! Look at this flow! Look at this gorgeous go, flow go that's on, going on here! Wow! Oh, yes. Now no. we're talking. It's all coming back to me now. Muscle memory. But these muscle memory games, they are so satisfying. Look at that. That's that's just what I want. Perfect. Hit the other gold coin. Yes. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. You see? Look at that. <laughs> Dodging shurikens left, right, and centre. Just for a little moment there, I am a platforming god, and then it all went wrong, <laughs> and I fell into yeah. some spikes. Bugger. But, <laughs> for that little bit... So, 
so, so far, like so oh, far, nuts. and like not not to say that we should move on or anything like that because I don't think we should. But so far, like each of the platformers that we've been showing have had a different a different appeal to everything that they do, right? So like yeah. we like we always say, oh, you know, they're difficult, and that's 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 what's enjoyable about mm. them, right? But like actually, there's there's more to them. Like Kid Trip is just. Like it's all about memory. It's about testing your memory. League of Evil is a, is about the quality of the precision of the controls. Rayman, like it's the presentation and the audio and like how it changes things up. The and charm, with this, yeah. with this, it feels like the the perfect run feels. It feels almost balletic, you know. It feels like you're making. You feel like you're doing one of those speed runs that you see on YouTube, you know, like where people play what? Legend of Zelda and they have to run backwards all the time. Yeah. You know, you feel like you're you're like amazing at it. Hitting the sweet spot is just like just so pleasurable. I love it. Uh, and I remember doing the review, and I think we got about got a four or five or something because I mean it, it's lo-fi, and what you're seeing now is sort of the whole game. It doesn't go too far beyond this. It just right. gets tougher and tougher, basically, and the uh, precision gets more and more precise, and it, the levels are more and more demanding. But um, it, as long as you again take pleasure in this kind of gameplay, uh, you will. You should play this. You, it's one of the better examples, as all the games we've been playing here today, of a platformer on an, on an iPhone. And I cannot sort of stress enough how tricky it is to get this genre right. If you're talking about a game like maybe a point-and-click adventure, a botan botanicular or a broken sword or something like that, when they port those games over to iPad or iPhone, it's a no-brainer. It's kind of easy because point-and-click adventures work perfectly because mm. it's just you jabbing your finger at the screen, picking out items. There's no kind of speed involved with it usually. You don't think, sit there thinking, oh, I wish I had a mouse because you're just using your finger and it works perfectly. When it comes to games like this and also, in my opinion, first-person shooters, the touchscreen can have a bit of difficulty replicating the same level of precision that you get on something like either a PC or a console. And that's where a lot of people turn around and say, oh, mobile games, they're a bit rubbish and they're not, never as good as a proper PC game or a proper blah, 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 blah. And in some cases, they're right. In some cases, it's because they're playing the wrong game. Yup. And if you do find the right ones, there are people who absolutely get it right. And that's what that's what this is all about, and that's what this show is going to be about in the future. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick five examples, the best examples of every genre and subgenre, and say, like, you know, this is what you should be playing. If you're a precision platformer guy, you want to be playing all of these games, ideally, or at least a couple. Uh, as before, as we do with all our little shows, we put the name of the game in the bottom corner of the screen. If you just tune in, you'll see the price uh, and everything. And also, Caffeine Dreamer, who's our man in the chat room, will probably put links to the reviews on both Pocket Gamer and Apps Fine. Uh, and via those reviews, you can get to the App Store. Uh, we he put is, links straight on in there. He is both our man in the chat room and the man. Oh yes, yes, he is with a with a capital T there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, definitive uh, article. Ba basically, um, basically, when we eventually do get him on here, you'll see his luscious hair, his <laughs> lovely smile. That's right. Uh, and all of those other things. Um, I, do you know what, I, I really like, I'm actually quite tempted to go and grab this. Um, so if you are just joining us, if you are just joining us now, then uh, this is the App Spy and uh, Pocket Gamer uh, Twitch channel, and we are going through our five, uh, I would say favourite, um, yeah. even though we, I detest them sometimes, and I think we all detest them sometimes, <laughs> Oops, um, hardcore, done. super challenging platformers, basically. And we've, yeah. uh, we've been doing, uh, so we've, we did uh, Kid Trip, League yep. of Evil 3, Rayman Fiesta Run, uh, this is Mikey Hooks, and uh, and we've got one more to go, um, and we are going to take a vote at the end as to which one we think is uh, our favourite. Basically, we shall we shall deem the winner, uh, yeah, and then uh, that's the one clearly that everyone should should go out and get. So now we're in a little uh, foresty environment. Oh, Previously, we were in this kind of white thing. It's pretty. So it, it is pretty. It does does change gradually, and you have to be ever so careful because they start throwing in more spikes and stuff, and. Uh, more red bots, different types of robots with different spikes in different places. So it does get more punishing and more challenging. But there you go, they've got spikes on the top and the bottom, as I've just discovered by jumping straight into it like a loser. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter, because uh, as with all, almost all these games, you'll see the, the necessity for the instant restart. Which I always talk about, but can never be can it's, never be underestimated. It's got to be it's got to be like that. It's it? got to be like I failed, I pressed restart, and bam, I'm straight back in the game. Or it, you know, that frustration of waiting is awful in these mm. things. Oh, that was rubbish. Um, and you, because you die often, any game in which death is a frequent occurrence, the less time you put between you dying and you restarting, the more likely you are to stick around. Absolutely, because the death is the penalty. The penalty should not be the death and a massive load time while you wait no. for the PlayStation 1 CDs <laughs> to spin. You know exactly. I mean? 
You need um, to be able to get straight back into it. And like yeah. you say, that makes death less frustrating, and it makes death what it should be in games, which isn't like a punishment for your object. It should be a learning process. Yeah, that's absolutely. what it's all about. Uh, and that's what these games do extremely well. So if you are interested, my key hooks. That's the one to go for. £1.49, $1.99. All of these games are available on the App Store right now. All right. Whoa. With that I'm done, I'm, this is, tell you what, this is intensive. Yeah. Because no, this, this, I have to concentrate like a bugger to play this, these. It's like <laughs> playing all of these in a row is like, oh. I know. It's like it's like a Whew. gladiator. It's like an American <laughs> gladiator if you're an American. Um, the yeah, it's like it's like a human challenge. It really is. Um, now we got oh what, a fifth one. Um, this one had better be the best one because the four that have come previously, I've really enjoyed. Um, so the fifth one, I'm assuming, will be topping. Well, no, it, these aren't in any order. It's up no, to no, no, of course, viewers. Of course to decide the order, so of here course. we go. All right, last entry in today's show, Genre Busters, Punishing Platformers. It is, oops, I pressed the wrong thing there and took the frame <laughs> away. That's not very good, is it? It, in fact, actually is Super Crate Box. Oh yeah. All right, so uh, let's put the little tags and prices up. Now, now then. This is a game that was released on PC as one of those free to download games, I think. Uh, okay. Originally based off a Flash game, if I remember correctly. Um, it is a single screen platformer in which you have to take control of a dude and the aim of the thing is to just go and collect a box. I've collected a box to shoot a gun. Every time I collect a box, I get a new weapon. In this case, I've just got a rocket launcher. Collect it again, now I've got a revolver. That only fires one shot, but it's mm, relatively powerful so I can take these big buggers out. The aim of the game is to collect as many boxes as possible, but each time you do, you get a new randomized weapon. Now I've got a shotgun, so you have to keep constantly changing your tactics on the fly, which is actually far harder than you think it would be. Um, these things start coming faster and faster and faster. Now I've got a rocket launcher, brilliant. Take these guys out. But then I, I accidentally ran into a crate that time and I'm back to a revolver. And now I've got a shotgun. Ah, and now I'm dead. <sighs> That's how quickly <laughs> this game works. Right, okay, so full disclosure here. Yes. Um, I, 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 when I played this, I really didn't like it at all. Really? Why? What's your reasoning? Die. I don't I don't know because I really liked Bubble Bobble and this <laughs> is basically a violent Bubble Bobble. It has got that kind of quality to it. There was a game that was released um, not long after Super Crate Box came out because this this obviously came out on um, PC way before we ever saw it. Flamethrower! Woo! Way before we ever saw it on um, uh, iOS. And in the meantime, a game called Super Muffin, Super Muffin, Muffin Knight, I think it was called, Muffin Knight, that was it, came out, which is very similar in its structure to Super Crate Box, this mm. single screen game in which you're running around collecting weapons. Now, you could say, oh, well, then it's blatantly copying Super Crate Box, but as I noticed when I started playing this, it's like, yeah, but this plays very much like Bubble Bobble, in the sense it's a single screen platformer in which enemies descend out of a hole in the top of the screen, uh, and you have to go around trying to collect stuff and occasionally shooting, uh, not bubbles in this case, but hardcore weapons in order to stay alive. Oops, I wasn't paying attention there. Um, so, you know, these games are all inspired by something. But what this one did really well, certainly on the PC, was it's so fast and again, so precise, they got the, the precision controls just right. They were cautious about bringing it to iOS, like the way the Super Meat Boy guys have said, like, nope, we're not bringing it to iOS. They kind of were going to do it for a long time and they, we kept showing like, builds of a game that was going to come and it never really appeared because in the end they went no we don't like it we think iOS is rubbish um, which is what they were notorious for saying and then they sort of changed their mind but the, their main point and fair play to them was that we can't get this to run right on iOS we can't get the feel and if we can't get the feel we don't want to do it and fair enough. You, you've got to respect that. Like, you don't want to release a kind of crappy version of it just for the sake of doing a cash grab. They went, you know what? We can't, we can't get it right. Doesn't feel right. This, this does feel right. They did do a good job. Now, people might argue it's still better to play on the PC, and that'll be down to a matter of taste. However, this is a very, very admirable admirable version of a conversion. They don't completely mess it up, and they don't turn it into an unplayable, you know, pale imitation of the original game. <laughs> It's a good game still. Okay. But, oh, yeah. I keep forgetting, because what the problem with this game is I end up getting caught up in the shooting, and I forget that I'm supposed to be collecting crates. And it's dangerous. Look, I just collected three crates in a row, and sometimes you collect a crate just in front of another enemy, like this, and you find yourself about to fire a flamethrower, and you wind up firing a pistol, 
and it requires many more shots to kill them, and you die horribly, or you fall off the edge just like that. Um, so it's it's a bugger, it's challenging, but again, once you get into the zone, once you start getting all kind of zen about it, and yeah. all the muscle memory kicks in, and you start twitching, that's why they call these things Twitch platformers, uh, it's it's beautiful, and you start okay. really, really performing. Whoa, flamethrower again. Ah, oh, massive one. Bugger. So this is all completely single screen, isn't it? Is it, is it the right. same map all of the way through? Uh, no, you can go to different maps. So this is kind okay. of a, this is the starter map, but you can go to different ones. The idea is that the more you... Ah, oh, I forgot I had a flamethrower. Sorry, I thought I had a rocket launcher, and I actually had a pistol, because I just collected the crate. This is why you've got to pay attention. Now I've got a machine gun. Boom. Remember, I've got the machine gun. Uh, yeah, they will always be a single screen level in which you just, they fall out the top of the screen and you have to try and kick their ass. But um, the levels will change, the uh, layout becomes a little bit more complex, um, and the, the enemies also become a little bit more frequent and rigorous, let's say. Uh, or bastards, as someone else might say. So yes, absolutely. Because <laughs> they um, are bastards. Okay, so, so I totally... I don't. I don't know what I didn't like about it. Maybe it, it was because it was just beating me so hard every single yeah, time. Yeah. Don't, um, don't, 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 don't. And I, I think I tried muffin, uh, uh, muffin night as well. And I, I, I think I had sort of roughly the same reaction. But I love Bubble Bubble. I absolutely oh, Bubble Bubble was amazing. I loved it. I played it on the Amiga back in the day, and I was oh. at such a hot spot for that. Like more than the other game, which was Rainbow Islands, which was Rainbow about, Islands yeah, came which... from the same com company. But no, it was always about damn it. It was always about Bubble Bubble did you, for me. Did that... you ever play Bubble Bubble Symphony? No, or was it the touch? I no, the that, one which... it was. Um, it was the Xbox. Well, it was an arcade game, and it only ever came out on Saturn and Oops. the original Xbox. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was beautiful. It was absolutely incredible, and it's never had a re-release. And I've always thought it would be perfect for iOS. Like it would yeah. again, it would be one of these things of give it to the Super Crate Box guys, and just be like, port it, port it, port it. <laughs> like sure. it would be, it, it would be really, really smashing. Um, but um, so I, I guess, I guess, kind of where I'm at with this game is. What is the appeal to you here? Like, it looks really stressful. It is really stressful, but that's sort is that of the, the appeal? appeal. That's the appeal with all these games. And I am going to, like, not sleep tonight now after playing all these games in a row like this. Oh, big red bastard, yeah. After playing all these games in a row and having to switch up between these different platforming styles, I'm going to have an embolism. But <laughs> there's always that hurdle, oh, idiot, where, where you pick up the game and you die a whole bunch of times straight off the bat and you think, no, no, screw this game. But actually, if you stick with it, you get a few victories, you get a feel for it, and you start becoming a bit of a, a bit of a pro. And you, oops, like not like me, because I'm just dying frequently because I'm talking. But uh, like I say, you get the death stare, like that, where you're just constantly like gurning at the screen, not saying anything, barely breathing, uh, but becoming a kind of Zen master at playing the game. And that's, whoa, these things can turn on a dime so quickly. You'll end up finding yourself up against insurmountable odds. And just as you think you're absolutely caning everyone, you change your weapon, you suddenly find yourself with a crappy revolver, and you're staring a massive, massive skull in the face, and you're screwed! Uh, but that's the kind of the thrill. You have to remember that you're picking up... Any oh, I've got a disc gun! Ah, oh, and it killed me! There you go, that was a new weapon called the disc gun, and it bounces off of the walls and ricochets back at you. So you have to jump over your own ammunition. I had forgotten about that, because that hadn't turned up. That's another element that I now must remember. Here you go, disc gun, look. There you go, it bounces backwards and forwards twice. Like that. Bam, bam. Duck! <laughs> and that's that's another element, but I've got to now go up to the top. Ah, oh, idiot. I've got to now go to the top and collect the next box. Okay. It's okay, so, fun! Go, so, um, okay. Uh, if you are just joining us, then this is the App Spy and Pocket Gamer channel. You are watching, uh, basically, every Monday what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to go through all of uh, lots of different games within a genre. We're going to call it genre busters, uh, and uh, we are currently going through really stupidly hard, really <laughs> difficult platformers um, yeah. at the moment. And um, so, uh, our five games that we've had so far have been Kid Trip, League of Evil Three, Rayman and Fiesta Run, Mikey Hooks, and this, which is Super Crate Box. That's um, right. And um, James, you've nearly died from stress. Yes, uh, thus, I really thus, have thus far, and that shows no signs of letting up, which I think is fair. Um, <laughs> we are we are going to at the end of uh, at the end of all this, since there's um, there's a there's a couple of you watching. Um, what we'll do Whoa. is uh, we're going to ask you which one you think uh, is your favourite out of those five games, um, right. because we've showed them in no particular order, because uh, we wouldn't. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, nice. I, I, I don't know. I really oh, like yeah. this, and I, what I love about us uh, going through this 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 genre specifically is that we've just looked at so many cool different games with lots and lots of different like art styles and like different 
play mechanics and like different feels to everything, you know? Yeah. Like it's ah, us. One got of the so main tough. things I wanted to do is that you prove that, despite the fact that I am playing appallingly uh, because I'm trying to talk and play, but I wanted to prove, you want to prove that they can do platformers on iOS. You, people will say to you that like, yep. oh no, this platform is all rubbish on iOS is by point. It's not true. It is not true. There are lots of rubbish platformers on iOS. We completely admit it. Like, I wouldn't try and say otherwise, and I would argue it's tougher to do platform games well on iOS. Agreed. But there are people who nail it. It can be done. It's not all just a bunch of really crappily controlled, poorly optimized ports. You get real games uh, genuinely, like, created with uh, this platform in mind, with the touchscreen in mind. Oh my god, I'm so dead here. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> But um, they they create. This is a port. This um one is kind of an exception to the ones we've been playing. It's a direct port of a game, but they managed to optimize the controls pretty well. The rest of them, they are games created for the touchscreen, especially things like Rayman, where they they could have easily just done a lazy port. They could have just bunged onto the screen, but they didn't. They rebuilt it for the ground up in a format that works on touchscreen, that plays to the strengths of the device, and that's what we're here to celebrate. That's what that's what makes these games so much better than some of the other ones you see kicking around. It's really really worth like diving into the genre provided you take a look at the right games let me get in this box i've got mines i've now got a machine gun oh it's so confusing and now these red buggers are chasing me down at the speed of light oh my word look at this stress you got to get involved with this stress it's look at the rocket launcher that was amazing it took about 20 people in one go and now i feel great <laughs> that's what these games are all about man that's what this is all about yeah. It's like you're gonna, I don't know, grab a ah. grab a lit cigarette and burn it into your arm, like ten crates, new <laughs> high score. That's what I'm talking so about. So high on endorphin, right? endorphins, right? Now. New area, rocket silo unlocked. Just like that. There you go. Here's a new area. That's your reward. I managed to get ten crates, which is the old the optimum goal of the game. I always mm. forget that. The thing is, what happens with this game, I find, is you get a rocket launcher, and then you're having way too much fun using the rocket launcher. You don't want to get another crate. So you kind of jump around blowing the pants out of people, going, yeah, this is awesome. And you forget that, actually, you're supposed to be collecting crates and not just running around killing everybody. <laughs> but it, 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 it's quite easy to slip your mind. See, this has got a little platform in the middle, and you think, great, I could just sit here and shoot everyone. But, as with Bubble Bubble, you get those ghosts, those wretched ghosts that start floating down, and they'll come straight to your location, just like the ghosts in Bubble Bubble. Mm. Uh, and they, they are buggers, and they must be killed immediately. So I've got to get to this next crate now. Here we go. Rocket launcher again. Whoa. So it depends how you choose to play it. You can choose to play it really aggressively and kill everyone, or you can try and just avoid everybody. Oops. And uh, just get the crates, which I'm kind of trying to do at the moment. But seriously, if you've played it on PC, that's great. And I would still recommend doing it on PC, because it's, you know, it's a fantastic game regardless. But the platform, sorry, the iOS version, this conversion, is really good. It's really, really strong stuff. So I would say get involved. There we go. There's the new section. And that brings us to the end. Right. So... Cool. Now we're okay. talking, all right? So, so. bring it back to the title screen. Here, you can see laid out before you, here are the five games. These are our five choices. What we're going to do now is give you about 60 seconds or so for people to put some votes in. If you're watching, if you are, uh, enjoy the look of any of those games, or if you've played them yourself and you think, yep, that's the one for me. I want you to get into the chat window and say which is your favourite. We've got Rayman Fiesta Run, Super Crate Box, Mikey Hooks, Kid Trip, or League of Evil 3. So, mm. as of now, voting is open. Uh, I know, right? Stressful, isn't it? So, we've got a few thousand people watching. Everybody get involved and uh, tell us what you think. And whatever one, we will crown it the winner. And we'll we will pull it up in all its glory. Yeah, we'll give it, we'll give it, uh, what? What should we do? 60 seconds? Should we do some vampires? Yeah, yeah. 60 seconds? Tell some, uh, tell some jokes. Uh... <laughs> well, what we'll actually do is we'll fill you in as what we're doing this week. Now, we are going to be streaming... <laughs> Every day this week. So, yeah. and as we will hopefully be doing in the future as well. As you can see, we're being promoted at the moment. And this is the, uh, we want this to be the place that you come to for iOS gaming information. This is what we aim to do with this channel. We're, we're both AppSpy, which is the site that I edit, and Pocket Gamer, which is one of the sites that Peter writes for as well as AppSpy. Um, we are both doing this channel together, side by side, as you can see. App, mm -hmm. um, Pocket Gamer is far more towards written reviews and everything, and it's a fantastic site. AppSpy, the one I do, much more based around video. 
And mm -hmm. that's that's what we try and focus on. So together we are we've put this channel together and we are going to be here every single day of the week. At, Whether you like it or not. Exactly. If you UK, it's five PM. If you're in the Pacific, uh, Pacific Standard Time, that is nine AM in the morning. Bit early, but come on, come and join us. Uh, or if you're in the Eastern uh, Standard Time, then it's twelve midday. So we've picked a time where we want everybody, no matter what country, area of the world you're in, it won't be all areas, but mostly the English-speaking uh, world, you'll be able to tune in and see us from, from all places. Plus, you can always come and catch up with the videos, both on the Twitch channel in the background and also on the YouTube channel too. So if you go to Atspy's YouTube channel, we post a lot of these videos up there as well so you can catch up. So uh, this today, we're doing the kind of genre busters game. On Wednesday, we do Eye on the App Store, which is where we cover all of the new releases. So the App Store refreshes every Thursday, which means that that's the day when the new releases come out. We, because we're journo types, get them a little bit earlier. So on Wednesday, we show you all of the games that are going to be, going to be coming out the next day. So you can tune in for maybe four or five games. We'll give you a walk through them, show you the prices, show you where to get them from. So you can say, right, that's that's the one I'm after or, or, or hell, this is all rubbish and I'll ignore it this week. Either way, <laughs> we're here to show you what it all looks like. Now, how are we doing in the voting booth? OK, well, I think at the moment it looks like Rayman has just about uh, snagged it. Oh, really? Uh, but really? League of Evil coming in second. Let's have a um, look. Rayman, League of Evil, Super Crate Box, Rayman, Rayman, League of Evil, Rayman. Oh, it is between League of Evil and Rayman. Look at that. Mikey Hooks has got a couple. League of Evil again. Ooh. Ooh, my word. Right, okay. Are we going to... We're going to call it closed as of now. All right, then. That's it. Vote's over. So, uh, mm. someone top them up. Let's have a look. How many? I'll count the Raymans and you count the League of Evils, okay? okay and we'll, okay. we'll put the... So we'll do it, do it silently. So there we go. <laughs> That's how you count. Yeah. Okay. I've got. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think. Okay. I so show me. Show me hands. Show me fingers. Oh. Oh. In that case, I would like to call a clear win for Rayman Fiesta mm. Run. How's mm -hmm. about that? Pull it up there. Look at the glory. Oh, it's oh. so pretty. It's so it's beautiful. beautiful. Isn't it amazing? It's even welcoming me back. It's so good. Yes, get that music. Best music in any mobile game ever. Uh, in any game ever, I would mm. argue. Look at that. Mm. I've got a new character. I can buy him a new blokey. That's brilliant. Let's go over to this area here uh, and have a look at the, this this new level. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. Look at that. Chocolate level <laughs> chunks. Oh, I'm just going to carry on playing this for bloody ever. It's marvellous stuff. Uh, I think that's a fair choice, you guys. I think you did well there. Yeah. Because I'd be inclined to be... Look at, look at the beauty of this. Look at the slickness. And one hand. Playing this with one hand. But it's not because it's simple or stupid. It's because it's well optimised. That's what we're talking about. It's perfect. Perfect for the uh, iPad. Perfect for your iPhone. And it's hopes the game that you should all be playing right now. So, uh, good choice. I concur with your, with your choosings. Oh, I'm going to make it to the end of this level. If it kills me, which it probably won't. Go on, son. Oh, this is great. I love these bits where the chocolate starts falling. And you have to drive your way through uh, floating bits. Look at that. And, and a glorious victory again. So I'm I'm totally in agreement with you guys there. Uh, that's going to be Rayman Fiesta Run. You can get it right now for £1.99 or $2.99. Also, take a look at Rayman Jungle Run. Because that first game is absolutely banging as well. Uh, they both, you know... Oh, look, perfect run. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's how we end it, guys. That's what you want to do. But any of these games are worth a look. If you're in, looking for a platformer on your iPhone or iPad, any one of those five will see you straight, provided you're prepared to put up with a little bit of stress. Just be warned. Just a little bit of stress there. But uh, I'm going to go and have a heart attack now because that was absolutely stressful as hell. But, you know, kind of rewarding too. So thank you, everybody, who came in and joined in for this hour. We'll be back again same time tomorrow and every day following it during the week. Uh, it's been at Spy and Pocket Gamer guiding you through all the best iOS, iPhone, and iPad games. My name's James Gilmore. That was Peter Wellington down there. And come and join us tomorrow. We will catch you then. Take it easy and a good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>